currency. Yeah, like if you look, for instance, at like Genshin and stuff, like if, if you will like see the US dollar value for every like click you do, like most people probably wouldn't click. Well, the other prop, yeah, they wouldn't click, but there's there's a lot of reasons for that. Like I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole, but um, it would actually hurt the game because of. Well, I mean, one of the big reasons why they're gems is because they give away, they don't just charge for gems, they also give them away for free, right? So, um, and there's different ways to do that. So anyways, it's just a more flexible system. So. Yeah, and you but also e have like, e ETH is just better. E like starting it, right? You get like some premium currency out and then you have like also like the thresholds where you well, get I'm like, also, I'm enough also... to do your rolls. If you do like 50 and then you like lack some gems and you buy like another, there's like all these like tricks going on. Yeah. Well, we've, we've, I've said since the beginning, we are making hybrid free to play web three games. Okay. They're not like on chain only. We're not doing that. They're on mobile. We're making hybrid games, like they're part free to play, part Web three. Um, so the economies are really complex because they take you know free to play style virtual currency and NFTs are involved as well. So it's it's um, you know very dynamic, very uh, you know uh, flexible because you could do both essentially. And um, I don't see why people aren't doing that because it just makes more sense like anyways but uh you know lots of games almost all games will there will never be an on-chain first person shooter okay <laughs> like literally never it will never happen like it's impossible so uh so most games will always be web 2.5 because you can't like have shooting a gun on contract <laughs> right there's no way you could process that that uh, transaction fast enough so uh web3 games most web3 games like chess you can do all on web3 right it would be slow but you could do it um uh but a first person shooter you cannot do it will literally never happen it can't happen it's physically impossible for it to happen so a lot of games will always be at best web 2.5 games so, um, and that, I think it'll be most games. So, though uh, most games will be a blend between you know, Web two and Web three. So, is it fair to say, in a way, that like you know, this is kind of an experiment for the Bridge to see like you know which one gains more traction, like the in-game items or, or like the the NFT? No, items? no, I've been making no, I've been making free-to-play games since two thousand and nine, eight, two thousand eight. So, uh, I know what I'm doing there. Um, so no, I wouldn't call it an experiment. I just I see Web three as a power up, like a like a huge advantage. Not Sales admin and music distributor. Hmm. Okay. Interesting job there. <laughs> so. You don't have to disclose anything. What, like, what industry are are you directly in? Like, I can say, I can confidently say, I'm in the transportation industry. I don't even mind saying what company I work for, because a lot of people that do follow me do know that I work for Swift Transportation, which I don't mind saying at all. But what uh, what industry are you in? to find out like whether I can really play this music or not. <laughs> It's kind of like a. I hear you. Um, it's kind of like when I say I work at Swift. You know, people know know the name Swift. They know it's a trucking company. And 
they immediately think I'm a driver or that I have something to do with drivers, which indirectly I do, but I don't. I'm not a driver. I don't deal with drivers. Um, I support drivers. I help drivers. We, I help you know, maintain their equipment and I'm responsible for training uh, the 800 mechanics that take care of the equipment and making sure they know how to do it correct and all that. So, uh, you know, definitely on the support to drivers, but they hear the name trucking, transportation, Swift, they automatically think you're a driver. Good golly, my dog is snoring over there. be surprised in some some truckers you know there, there's not uh, I think for the most part there's like the what people have the, the, the main mold of what a truck driver looks like but um, there's a lot of drivers that don't fit that mold at all So here's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, so my IT department left it in my wheelhouse that I can, because they have t plenty of the 27 inch monitors in stock that I can use on my company laptop over there. Because I pulled the old 24 off, it's over there. Um, because it's just uh, VGA and DVI input and the new docking station is display port and HDMI only. I suppose I can go to the garage and find an adapter, but I so the options are they can send me one of the 27 inch monitors they have, or I could just go buy a bigger monitor, which I need, and put it up here on this desk for my work laptop. So what I'm thinking about doing. You can buy a 43 inch smart TV cheaper than a monitor. So I'm right now looking, now the problem is 43 inches is much bigger than 32 and 34. So I'm trying to decide if I want, I mean, I can get a, a Samsung 43 inch 4K smart TV so that I could also, you know, have it connected to Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, I could watch TV, Netflix, stream something while I'm, you know, but do I really want to take up all that space right there? I mean, and I have the room for it. I mean, I definitely have the room for it. <laughs> 43. I wish they would make a 4K TV smaller than 43, and that's what I can't find. But 249 bucks? That's cheaper than a, 
that's no joke. That's that's uh, cheaper than. I mean, if you look at 32, 34 inch monitors. Let me go back and look at them again. Okay, these are all 27s. 27. But, you know, I've worked on big stuff like that before, and man, you could definitely have multiple windows open up on a 43. I'm half tempted to go to Best Buy and pick that up. It's in stock. For 250 And again, I'm not paying for this. It's, it'd be cheaper than the monitor. Also, don't really want to take up that much real estate on that, that desk. Because right now the desk at least looks more like work environment, you know. And then you just put this giant TV on there. Um, it would, you know, I could wall mount it, but. has plenty of room on it. It's, it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I think it would make me feel better if it was just something because I was so used to the 24 inch monitor just sitting there on on the on the old docking station the old laptop and uh, this docking station is the docking station on this one is just a it's like a little cube versus a long tray that you snap the laptop in so now there's a, definitely a lot more room in fact i the way this configuration is set up i can literally put the laptop under the desk because I have a shelf under the desk and that would eliminate like one more thing on that desk it's just that again it would take up space there let me stand up and look at that real quick 43 wish they made a the problem the problem I found is that anytime you select a TV in 4k now you can find plenty of TVs smaller that are only 1080p but I would like to have more pixels so that I have more control over the size of documents that I'm working on and things like that and 1080p it'll, it's, it's definitely not going to do it been to multiple websites and anytime the moment you choose 4k or even 2k uh, it's very very difficult to get under a 43 inch tv uh, 
an experiment like as an i guess you know until till we put it out you can you know you could say it's a guess or whatever it's not a guess like i'm not concerned at all like it's definitely gonna work it's just uh i think the approaches that people are taking are kind of like uh they're too like they get so into the uh on-chain aspect of it that they kind of like lose track like that games need lots of players in order to be successful and uh, not only that like there's stuff that's totally inappropriate on chain like that well one there's stuff that's impossible like literally and will always be impossible and then there's just stuff that doesn't even make sense um so i i always see it i i just see it as like there's things in the game that are better in web3 yeah, so here's a gigabyte 34 LED curved monitor. It's 380 bucks. And there's things in the game that are worse. And there's no reason why you can't blend, uh, you know, Web 2 and Web 3. Uh, 34. In a case of a first person shooter, you have to. You don't have a choice. Or a racing game, or a Street Fighter. Or anything where there's like fast movements online, like it's literally and impossible to do these games on chain. So pricey. You're, they're always going to be some kind of blend. Oh yeah, but I even if you agree there, like you're definitely not going to put. Like, I didn't mean the game part. Like you definitely can't. There's a 32 for 349. These are monitors, not TVs. 299 for 32. Oh, that's the same one that I have right here. The the Gigabyte 32Q. QC A. It's not a bad price. It's a twenty seven. Twenty seven. These are all twenty sevens. Problem is, is once you select 32 inches and you click on 4K 2160, so here's a 32, but that's 450 bucks. Man, I'm not paying for it, but. have some respect for you know treating the the company's wallet as if it was my own you know it's something they it's an expectation they put on us so i have a hard time spending that kind of money just to be the right size on the desk and have that kind of capability but If that 450 was closer to maybe 50 bucks cheaper, like 50 bucks or even 100 bucks, I'd be all in. I'd go get it today. There's an open box for 304. What? More than like you said, like a chess game on chain. Like that's not happening. Ever like you know that's just no no it's it, most people it's amazing to me how many people don't understand that like they think that <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah it uh, it's kind of, it is kind of crazy how many people don't understand that and there there's I tried to explain it to one in one space where the where I said look it's physics there's <laughs> it's literally impossible to do these things and then the guy responded well well physics hasn't been fully understood <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's like dude. Uh, anyways 
I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm sorry. It's never happened. It's, uh, it's yeah, it has been. Yeah, but but has anyways, <laughs> but I but there are a lot of people kind of selling. I mean, look, it's not like everybody sits down and studies computer science all day long. But there are a lot of uh, so it's understandable that a lot of people wouldn't like get this. But and there has been a lot of snake oil salesmen promising. You know, every game is going on chain in the future. It's literally impossible, and uh, I don't know why. How, I, it's kind of sa- it's sad because we got scammed into believing this, and they put a lot of money into why. Oh, okay, I see. So here's an open box for three forty-eight. You get it in two days. Or I can go get it in an hour for three sixty one. <clears throat> I think I may have found my uh, my monitor. So it's a Samsung thirty two inch which is the same size as the monitors I have on this desk right now. Uh, QLED 4K smart TV. So that'll mean I can, uh, you know, connect it to Wi-Fi, and I'm, I'm sure it's probably got like, who knows, Apple TV, Netflix, all the usual stuff, right? Uh, I might pull the trigger on that sucker. 361 open box. QLED. Q, Q, QLED. 4K. I don't mind paying that. And again, I'm not paying for it, but again, I could. I don't want to be... Um, I think they were expecting me to pay up to $350 for a monitor to go out on my own and buy one. Um, but if I can get it where it has capability of a TV as well, because there's a lot of times where I'm like, like you Rico, I do most of the stuff on my own personal computers. So I'm usually working over here. And if I, even though it, it might just be a distraction to have something streaming on the TV over there, but. Uh, that are easy to, you know, like I, not not that they should be doing research on everything, you know, you, nobody has time. But and there are people just lying. But yeah, anyway. So like most games, most games that you want to play are going to be blends between Web two and Web three. Yeah, for and, me, and, and I, you and I could one like full on for anyone then, listening. Sorry guys, like, I can't. Sorry, like there's no way there's ever going to be games on chain like the way that people want it. And the reason is not because of any physical like. The reason, the whole point of blockchain is to not, the latency is built in, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but my point of experiment was more like... Open box certified, geek squad certified, professionally clean, looks brand new, includes all original parts and accessories, typically contains original pack, packaging. Do you think that the, like, the revenue stream of most games is going to switch to like, in, like NFT items or is it going to... Do you think it's going to stay like over time? It's still going to stay like in game items, mm-hmm. or do you still think that moving over to like you know um, NFT digital collectibles? Um, I think yeah, I think over time it will move to majority NFTs uh, because there's basically no reason why you couldn't um, put the items. Well, it says it has everything. It says uh, looks brand new, includes all original parts and accessories. So I think it. I think it has everything. Um, so even if it had an HDMI um, cable, but I mean I have plenty of HDMI and even DisplayPort cables. So um, let me look at what cable or connections are on this TV here. So two, three HDMI inputs, two USB ports, 
so it doesn't have a display port and that's fine I mean because uh, that um, the docking station is one HDMI and two display ports so I'll just run it on the HDMI port built-in Wi-Fi and Ethernet. <laughs> I could hardwire into my network. Uh, works with Amazon, Alexa, Google Assistant, Smart Things. Ah, don't really care about all that. streaming services Apple TV yep need that uh, Hulu yep Prime yep Showtime yep YouTube yep Netflix it's got all the stuff I use <laughs> um, damn it I think I should just pull the trigger on this sucker now be gone right because the, the the it's the the rare fact that they're showing one like like it'll be i mean the store is less than 10 minutes away from me here on the west side of albuquerque There's like almost no reason. There might be some cases where you need to, to use the item so quickly that putting it on chain is a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but I I can't imagine because you know basically you know I, I when I made Game of War like Game of War and Mobile Strike were you know they were known for people spending a lot of money and um, you know I designed those games i designed the economies i designed pretty much you know almost everything so i'm very familiar with what people were spending money on how much money they were spending all that and when i think back on it i go I, you know like the games games get old and they fade right and are they quit they get tired of it whatever for whatever reason right they don't really like get anything after that they don't get anything after that they get nothing they just have some entries on a database for a mobile game that they don't play anymore. And they paid for those entries on a database. So to me, it's just so obvious that if they could have bought an NFT instead, they would. It's clearly, you know, imagine spending $10,000 on a game item that's not an NFT. Like you have two options, $10,000 on a game, game item that is an NFT or $10,000 on a game item that's not an NFT. Like which one are you gonna pick? It's very clear, you're gonna pick the NFT. So a lot of the people who talk about like gamers and NFTs, they're only thinking about the people who don't spend money. <laughs> okay. Which by the way, is 90% of the people don't spend money. The 10% or less of the total gaming population that does spend money will demand NFTs because they want to be able to trade and sell them. Of course, they're spending money. Like, why wouldn't they want that? It's obvious. So anybody who says NFTs won't work, 
they're insane like of course they're gonna work like it, they're obviously gonna work and, and all the people saying it's not gonna work like do you spend money in games you probably don't and because oh, you don't spend money you don't understand why you would want an nft oh do i really want yeah, to yeah, somebody like company? bought on like up the way like also from like my it's obvious people like, i know like, 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 it's like she's so like, obvious these whales i speak to and i tell them like about nft they're like oh that's great i really like that and you have yeah, like all like these so, gamers that like never spend and complain about like whales in game and everything they're like nfts are horrible or right, like bad right. but then why well, yeah, 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 yeah this is gonna take over gaming fast because it doesn't make sense to spend you have to consider 120 billion dollars a year is spent on mobile games and almost all of it is in-app purchases for virtual items that are not nfts so it's pretty obvious that 120 billion dollars is going to go to nfts because who wants to just throw their money away on a database entry you know nobody Right, especially if they, if they have the option to actually own the thing that they're buying. All right, done. All done, ordered. So, I'll probably just go pick it up when I go get my daughter out of school. And there's my text message telling me the order's placed, I bet. Yep. Hopefully, they don't call me and tell me it was wasn't actually in the store. <laughs> it's pretty impressive though. I mean, that's uh that's a rare find to to find 4K capability uh, so basically 2160p it, you know let me switch screens here um you know to find 4k under 43 inches is pretty rare and and generally the prices are pretty high as you can see like regular price on this thing is like 4.99 uh it's 4.49 and it's a samsung so good brand you know and the, you know the biggest thing was the 21 20 2160p uh, i did not want a 1080p tv i have i already have i already have several 1080p tvs i could have just put up here but um, it wasn't going to work so so not bad we'll take that So this is a no-brainer. It's not even worth debating. Anybody who debates it just isn't thinking or they don't spend money. Anybody who spends money is going to want this. In fact, they're going to demand it. In fact, if they if they get offered to spend $100 or whatever on something that's not an NFT, eventually they're going to say, hell no, like why would I do that? So it's just obvious free-to-play is going to change. Free-to-play is going to have to incorporate NFTs. NFTs will be demanded by the players. A majority of free-to-play game revenue comes from whales, comes from one-tenth of one percent of the spenders, and all of those people are going to want NFTs because they're spending thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and in some cases, millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars, and they don't get any NFT. Imagine spending millions of dollars on a game and you don't get a single NFT because that's what they're doing right now. And I mean, the free to play players, they kind of have to follow because, like, it's like a lot. No, no, it's not that they like, have to follow. They well, they will, will demand follow. it because who wants to just spend money and get, you know, nothing? Oh, essentially, no, but I mean, like, that's I, what's I happening. About, like, the people that, like, don't, like, um, pay and that, like, basically, they want, like, just a free game they can play. The people but, like, who don't like NFTs are. Then, like, the they people have to, like, who. Follow too. The people who don't like NFTs are the people who don't spend money. The yeah, people who I'm spend saying. money will want NFTs, so it doesn't really matter what the people who don't spend money want because they don't spend money anyways. These video game developers make nothing on them. They're going to have to do things that their customers want, which are the people who spend, and the people who spend are going to want NFTs. Yeah, obviously. that's the point I tried to make. Like, they have to, like, yeah. follow the whales. If the whales move over, like, they pay for, like, it's the not games they play. It's not it. Well, yeah, it's when. Yeah. It's when, yeah. Yeah. 
so that's just obvious and you don't really hear many people explain it that way because they've never made a game like i've made big multi-billion dollar games and i can tell you these people are spending a lot of money and there is zero doubt in my mind they wish they got nfts but you know what how i see it is that um we were you know it's not anybody's necessarily anybody's fault because we were just making games on inferior technology you know like just building everything out in your database is inferior to ethereum and it wasn't like it wasn't like on purpose it was just that was the best best thing we could do at the time and now there's a better solution with ethereum and polygon but i like ethereum and there's some other soul whatever but these are superior solutions for video games far superior and they weren't available a couple of years ago really so it's not really like it's not like the gaming companies were just kind of like doing it to like rip people off it was just like that's how you made video games and now there's a new superior solution with blockchain and they're going to move over mainly because the customers are going to demand they move over because why wouldn't they want an nft if they're going to spend all that money of course they would so uh it was just like a you know fact it was just like microtransactions and the way everything went down was really just like yeah when they do the bods right that's when they do it yeah i've had a few of those where they've done that on some different things that i've done and then you go try to put the video over on youtube and you got dmca strikes on it i have one video that i did a live stream of the USA Masters National Championships was held here in Albuquerque. And so I was out there streaming for like eight, nine hours. And I can't remember if I did a multi stream where I did it on Twitch and YouTube, or I probably just did it straight to YouTube. But later on, it had so many DMCA strikes on it. Um, that they didn't even give you the option to like go back and edit or um, mute sections of the audio out. Uh, and so all that content was just, it's, it's, a, it's a wash, it's a loss. So. YouTube is something else, and I think that's one reason why um, I'm even cautious about like what I'm actually playing now. Because if I do ever try to take uh, any clips of the video and put them up on YouTube, then I have to pay attention to, like what's actually on the background of it. Because of the technology they were using, and now now all that's going to change. So it's just in fear. You just have to look back at web 2 and just realizes it's inferior gaming technology that's going to get phased out naturally yeah 100 percent. and you know the one other thing i just want to say is like it doesn't even matter which chain um gamers end up moving to like i don't care if it's I, I disagree with that totally. i mean I, I okay i you know you're right to, to in a sense but i would say like you know the fact that it's just teaching people self-custody teaching people how to like you know hold an asset in their wallet by themselves without going yeah. through their bank or without going through some stable coin or centralized exchange or whatever that is a huge value prop that is so huge right like so i, I i'm a big supporter of that I, just by itself. i agree i yeah i totally agree with you um but that's sort of like late stage because a lot of people don't know what an nft is so most people 99 percent. so the first solutions are all going to be custodied by the developer we just saw this um uh, Apple change where they're like, oh, you got to give us gas fees, right? Well, I mean, there's an obvious, I mean, I, it's obviously what they're trying to do. They're, they're kind of like, they don't understand NFTs and they just realize they can move the NFT off of the platform and they're like, uh oh, <laughs> right? So they're like, what's going on here? So now they're trying to essentially stop NFTs from moving, which is not, you know, like, you know, there's a workaround for that too, which is you just have a custody solution and you just move it in a database. So, you just have a uh, like an off iOS wallet that you transfer it to with zero gas fee. So I mean, we were already building things that way. So when I saw the, ch the change, it's like, well, that's pretty. It's negative because it shows that Apple One doesn't understand NFTs. And Rico, do you? Uh, so since you're talking about YouTube and getting strikes after, do you have a? I 
probably go just check out your profile. You have a YouTube channel. You have that on your about info. So um, they're scared of them because they realize it goes around their system. Um, but you know, the fact that you can even have an NFT kind of like they they're gonna get to the point where they're gonna decide because there there is workarounds to what they're suggesting and they're going to have to decide whether they want NFTs or not because they can't really control it the way they did. like none of the stuff none of the stuff they're doing is going to control NFTs none of it like there's tons of ways around all this stuff oh, okay. they're just protecting like they're in a purchase yeah I was doing that before I became affiliate and Yeah, and Dimitri, what you're talking about too is something I'm actually thinking about doing. The only, my only problem with that, Dimitri, is that uh, hard drive space. Man, as it is, um, I don't always. So I don't always want every stream, but often I usually go down. I go to Twitch and download the streams. And from there, I'll either determine like whether I'm going to put up the entire stream or cut it down to a section and then upload it. But the problem with that is that whether I'm downloading... I mean, I could imagine if you were recording how quickly your hard drive would fill up. In fact, I had to go clean up one, two terabyte hard drive because I was downloading all these past Twitch streams and putting them there till I can get to deciding whether I was going to edit it or just upload it as a whole. Um, and I didn't realize I was just I was just packing and packing and packing that hard drive. In fact, that's what the package I had to go get out is I just ordered three new SD hard drives to put in this computer um, because I'm going to pull all the big hard drives out and I'm going to make a hard drive server and just put these uh, smaller I got like two terabyte uh, two 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 terabyte in one uh, 512 uh, half a terabyte for some other things that I do um yeah you, you just you just uh, man it's just a lot of space But I also found out though that that hard drive was not necessarily plugging up because of past Twitch streams that I was downloading. I completely forgot that, um, I don't know if you wear this, but I have another channel on my YouTube. It's called the um, Power Karma Focus and Relaxation Stream. And it's where I take uh, 30 second, 50, you know, 45 second clips of where I go out and you know, shoot the river, um, rivers and streams and things like that. And I overlap the video and create these like four and five and eight hour long videos and upload them to the channel. Well, I kept forgetting, like after I go make a video, cause you know, the original clip is only 15, 30 seconds long, but when you overlap it to make a 4k five hour, eight hour video, <laughs> you're taking a huge chunk of your hard drive space. So I went out and cleared out like five or six of these videos that I made and I got all my hard drive space back. I, I, so I have to remember that. Now. Did I really? Let's see here. Yeah, is that... Oh, you know, yeah, I probably did by accident. I, I, for, I sometimes, when I'm going back and forth, because I have like, eight different profiles on uh, YouTube, I, I sometimes forget to switch back. That's, that's probably what it was. In fact, I should probably go look at like what channel I'm on now. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, I could see how I could easily do that because when 
I switch back and forth to different because I have Power Karma Cycling, Power Karma DIY and Repairs, Power Karma Gaming, Power Karma Streaming, Power and then the straight up Power Karma, Power Karma Shorts, Power Karma Fitness, and then the Power Karma Focus and Relaxation. So I was probably on on that one and forgot about it. Yeah, <laughs> that it was me. It was me being uh, forgetful. Uh, I tried to remember to switch back after I've done some uploading or work or something like that, and then I yeah, forget. Ability, they know, but once you get NFTs on there, it's kind of too late, basically. So we'll see what ends up happening. But there's that whole like gas thirty percent, like that. You don't even need gas to move an NFT. Like look at Nifty Gateway. If the gateway has a custody wallet solution, you can move it around all you want. No gas fee. So uh, anyway, so there's, it, it, they just didn't, I, I think they're kind of like, they don't understand what they're getting themselves into. Alrighty. Uh, it's getting close to lunchtime. So I'm probably going to uh, probably head out for lunch here in about 15 minutes or so. So it'll more than likely mean I'll shut the stream down because shortly after lunch you know i'll come back in finish up a few things and then i gotta go leave and go pick up my daughter i'll tell you what though um i have been itching to get outside and do an irl stream um i don't know that that necessarily will mean a bike ride That's what I'm doing with a lot of my stuff. And I'm trying to get good about deleting some of the stuff. You know, I, 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 I almost hate doing that. But it, at the same time, I look at if I got it posted to YouTube, there's at least a record of it out there that I can go download it. And um, I'm thinking maybe just like, you know, going. I've and I've already started doing that, and I reluctantly like click on certain projects and project folders and delete those videos. <laughs> on 1080 on the GoPro 11, or it, it, it must be like really high, uh, high bit rate or something. I imagine. Do you happen to know what the bit rate on that is? <laughs> like, like one, like probably 100 or more, maybe? Because what are your options? Like generally, like the GoPro is like what, 60, 80, and 100 or something like that? Oh, anyways, what I was saying is, um, I'm, I really want to get out on an IRL stream. All my gear is just sitting over there on the thing. And I've, uh, it's been a while since I've done an IRL. I've been doing, you know, a lot of Zwift, a lot of gaming, um, and I want to get outside. So I think this afternoon, yeah, it's still, sh it's, so it's, uh, I think the clouds have finally broke. Um, so we're no longer sitting in fog. Oh, really? Okay. So you don't... Um, and I think you may, maybe you're right. I, I'm trying to think. Maybe I'm thinking of another device where I had to go... No, I think it was my GoPro that I had to... Or no, maybe it was my Sony camera. I think I'm, maybe I'm thinking my Sony camera where I had to select the bit rate. Yeah, and I, th I think you're right. I think because I think on the GoPro, because I because I have because I have a setting set set for 
1080 30 and a and a 2k 30 but I think I chose higher bitrate because I, I was trying to increase the quality of what the IRL streams look like. So I, so I gave myself two modes to choose from to test it out. But anyways, like I was saying, uh, I might get out for an IRL today. Um, so I might just go ahead and drive out to the uh, east side the city up in the, the foothills the heights and take the backpack and the uh my dad cam i call it <laughs> did i ever show you my dad cam Day's not over. Uh, I'm just going to Which go is negative a quick because lunch. they tend to, this has I've seen this before. I've been on the Apple platform since the very beginning and they've done this many many times. This time I was thinking maybe a little bit different because they know what NFTs are. Like at the beginning of the uh, app world of like free to play games and all that stuff, they didn't know what free to play games were. They didn't understand them at all. They were making stuff up as they went along. This is a little different. They do know what NFTs are, but it kind of like this new change kind of shows that they don't understand NFTs. Like it kind of shows that they didn't get that you can move an NFT. <laughs> you know, it's like, wait a minute, you can move one? Uh oh. You know, so that means it can go off platform. That means they can trade it off platform. And they're like, well, we're going to tax it going off platform. It's a really desperate move, to be honest. Um, and it's really kind of like futile. It's a futile move, it's a desperate move. Um, and that's negative because they could just get to the point where they realize like, oh shit, you can't control this stuff and maybe ban it altogether. I highly doubt it, but um, I'm pretty bullish on it still. But um, it does show that they don't they don't get it. Um, but like I said, I've been on I've been work I started on the iPhone in 2008, and uh, we were a pioneer of free to play. We most of the stuff. We didn't take credit like we are now at Limit Break, but most of the stuff that you see in free to play, we made up. Like so much stuff, that, like we were the first free to play app on iOS. Okay, like like eight months before they even had in-app purchases, like we just figured out a way to put purchases in. We just figured out a lot of the stuff that people do every day. They don't realize that I made it up in 2009. You know, and and we didn't weren't like on Twitter taking credit for it. But I look at a lot of games. It's like I remember when I did this. I remember when I did that. And we, we set a lot of the a lot of the tone for free to play games on iOS at Machine Zone. A lot of it. And uh, it's uh, Game of War is still like the most cloned game like ever. And the clones of Game of War made billions of dollars. You know, so it's like we, we definitely knew what we were doing. And so like when we're coming into the Web three for mobile, we're gonna have the same effect. You know, we're gonna be the we're the same 
we're the same innovators, we're the same pioneers that we were uh, in 2008. It's the same group of people. It's literally the same group of people. So we're going to do the same thing. And we already are. If you look at what we're doing, we're already doing a lot of new stuff and it's coming out at a very fast clip. And it was the same thing at Machine Zone. We just didn't have a Twitter and we didn't take credit for it. But here we are taking credit for it. And it's open source so people can kind of use our stuff too. So that's cool. But um, but yeah, so there's a lot of challenges and opportunities. But uh, the, the, the big opportunity is on mobile free-to-play for sure. That's where all this is going to go down. And all the, all the players are not going to accept not getting NFTs anymore. Like, I think that process is only going to take about 18 months maximum. Maximum. It's $120 billion that goes nowhere. Can you imagine that staying that way? $120 billion every year just going nowhere? That, like, it just disappears? Like, why would that doesn't make any sense? Of course, it's going to go into assets instead, digital assets. Of course, it's going to make that transition. And it's going to make that transition pretty quickly. Yeah, awesome. I, I, I just want to give um, the philosopher a chance. Like he, he set his hand up for. for yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're just chatting. We're just hanging out. Not serious. Uh, who, who else wants to speak? Data guys, see your hands up. Philosopher has been here for a while. Go ahead, philosopher. Um, good day, Gabriel. Good day. Hey, how are you? I'm chill. Um, actually, at some point, I work and I can't hear what you're saying. Like. I'm you're kind of muffled. Right you're very, you're very hard to understand. You sound like you're, you sound like you're talking through a sweatshirt or something. I can't really hear you. I mean, yeah. okay. Can I, can I rejoin? But I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can rejoin. Are you speaking through like AirPods or something? That may be the issue. All right, let me start rejoining. I'm rolling through. You're bring up. I'm logging. All right. Uh, how about you put? I'm gonna put yourself on mute, and we'll talk to the data guy. Hey, Gabe. How are you going? Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Jonah's hey, up here. Spam. Hey, Jonah. How are you? Hey, good. Just working as usual. Cool. Hey, I've got a quick question, Gabe. Um, just yeah, regarding sure, no the the hack that happened about a month ago, just wondering if there's a, a solution that your your team has come up with. Yeah, I actually do want to address this because uh, we do have. So one thing that actually kind of rubbed me the wrong way, since I got everybody's attention, you know, I, when that was hacked, um, and, you know, we've had the FBI involved too, so this will come to a solution, a resolution, I should say. When I was hacked, it was done through an AT&T employee that overrode all of my security settings on my phone manually to access my phone, which I, I set up every possible security measure, measure that I was supposed to set up on AT&T. And a very high level employee changed all my passwords through their database. So there was literally no way I could stop it. And one of the things that bothered me was that when that happened, people approached me and said, when are you going to give compensation? I was basically like, my phone was like raped. That's how it felt. Like I was on my phone, it didn't work anymore. I was panicking for hours trying to stop all this stuff. The hacker, the hacker, not me, put out a link that was a wallet train and it got about 44 ETH. And the people who approached me afterwards, angrily, as if I owed them something after being raped through this phone, really kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I don't owe compensation to anyone because I didn't do anything wrong. Like I didn't take anything from you. I was attacked. It wasn't uh, something that, you know, I did. So it's like not something I did to you, okay? I don't have anything to give back to you because I didn't take anything. However, we are giving the 44 E worth of stuff that was stolen to the victims just because we're nice. But there have been some people who have approached me in really aggressive ways after this happened to me, kind of like victim blaming, which is what they're doing and making it my responsibility that they fell for a hack that, you know, 
happens every day. And in fact, it happened two days before the same person did it to a goblin town person two days prior to when it happened to me. And then they got an ape, they got like 50 apes from some other, other people the next day. Now, luckily, most people did not fall for it because I have a big audience and it was about 44 ETH worth of stuff that was taken. So most people were smart enough to see like this is a wallet drainer, uh, which is something that you do have to get good at in this space. It's not everyone's responsibility. We can't have self custody and it's everybody else's responsibility. Okay. But I have been kind of upset by how people been talking to me as if I did something to them. I didn't. This is not something that I wanted to happen. I did not take anything from you. We will be giving the E to the people, but it's a gift. It's a compensation because we didn't do anything to you. Uh, but it is something that has bothered me because like kind of like the aggressiveness that people have been like, this is not something that we wanted. And this is something that I couldn't have prevented. Like I could not have prevented my phone from this happening, my phone from being stolen from me. Literally impossible for me to prevent. But we will be giving it shortly. So that's my long answer. But I have been kind of like, I get some pretty aggressive DMs from people. And we've been dealing with law enforcement and stuff. Uh, and some of it has just been like really disturbing. And, and by the way, there's been a lot of people lying that they got hacked. It was about four. Luckily, the 44 ETH is not a small amount. But it's also not like three days later, somebody lost like 60 apes to the same group. Um, so most people in our audience did not get fooled by this because we have a big audience and there's a lot of people who have stuff and they didn't get tricked by this stuff. Um, and we did respond immediately. We were in our Discord, we were on our Digi account, we were on our limit break warning everybody about this. So it, you know, it's not necessarily like we were negligent here. Like we were on it immediately within seconds of it happening, literally within seconds. So, um, you know, well, well we've, tried, we've done what we can to try to make sure this doesn't happen again. Uh, but you do have to be responsible for your own wallet. Like, uh, if you see a link on Twitter, it doesn't mean just because you click it and you follow directions doesn't mean the person whose account was hacked is responsible for you clicking on the link for you connecting your wallet. You know, that's not, you have to think before you do this stuff, but we are giving me to the people who were affected.